Good morning. How y'all doing today? It's a wonderful day that God has made, isn't it? I got some announcements here. Tomorrow there's going to be a funeral service for Virginia here at the church uh, from 1 to 2 p.m., a memorial service for her. Uh, the other thing is, UMW will not meet. It will be rescheduled. So I don't know if that means they have to have two meetings in one or what. But Choir practices, this is good news. Choir practices will begin this Wednesday, October 20th at 6.30 here. There is a sign-up sheet on the greeters table for those who'd like to sing in the choir. That's awesome right there. The monthly ad board meeting will be this Thursday, the 21st, at 7 p.m. back in the parlor. Be here. If, if you can't be here, let someone know. If you have information that they need, give it to them so they can share. That way we have a really awesome meeting. Does anyone else have an announcement that I don't know about? No? That's cool. No announcement, no more. All right, well, I'm going to open this up with prayer then. Father God, this awesome day you have provided us. Good rains. We need the rain. The farmers are out doing their stuff, and today I get to be out and do mine. I get to mow again. It's awesome. It's time with you riding around. We don't deserve you, Father, but yet you are there for us all. Always, in all ways. We appreciate that. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty and cover yourself with delight as with a garment. You have stretched out the heavens like a tent and have laid the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. Make the wind your messengers, fires and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be shaken. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place which you appointed for them. You set a bound which they should not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. Amen. When the music stops, I know I got something more I got to do, so that's a, that's a clue for me. Thank you, Carolyn. That was awesome. We're going to have our prayer time now, so I'm going to be walking around. I got this thing on so everyone can hear me. Uh, if you have a prayer request or a joy, because I think those are cool too, let me know. Yes. No, ma'am, I'm talking to you. Isn't that in a movie? Two crests or praises? Two crests. Oh, okay. Prayers. I have 26 and 2 and 8 and 10 and 11. 
Yes, I know from here. Okay. Is that it? Yes. I, I, I see you. No way. 90 what, dude? As I say a little south of here, Feliz de Cuplianos. That means happy birthday in Spanish, by the way. Yes, ma'am. Hospital in Atlanta. I hope you can read this. I can, yes. Yes, Dan. Anybody else while well, I'm backing up? I, did, I turned the alarm off so you don't hear it. Bob? Oh, yes. I had a friend pass a year ago, my little Cindy. She was three months old, so she's been diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And she's having treatment, and we just have to keep praying for her. Indeed we will. Mike? Bev? Hi, how are you doing? All right, I'm turning my back, but not on purpose. Yes. Some man named Christian Fraser um, was in our very early Adventist church. He would come home, um, you know, and he does definitely a lot of things. What is it? Auto accident? I really don't know. Okay, so we'll just accident meets yeah. prayers. That it? Last call. Well, thank you very much. Father God, we pray for Penny Flick. She's having health issues. She used to come here a lot, and she sat right over there. We pray for her daughter, Wendy, in a hospital in Atlanta. She has problems. We pray that the doctors can fix them for her. Dan Jeffers and his family, Father, in a lack of a better phrase, they've been through the ringer this summer into the fall. It's getting better. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. He did lose a grandmother, but it's getting better for his family. 
And that's because of you, Father, and that's because of everyone sitting in these pews today because the power of prayer is real. It does heal, especially when the big guy gets involved. Twyla's daughter, Cindy, is in Minnesota. She's got stage 4 cancer. Father, help these doctors. Do something positive for her. Bring her pain away. Bev's daughter, Beth, has dental work that needs to get done. She's got other issues, and so she's got some teeth that need to be yanked out. She has no insurance, Father. Find a way for her so that this can be done for her. Christina Frazier was in an accident. Or Christian, I'm sorry, Christian Frazier. Sorry, Chris. Was in an accident and needs prayers. Be with him, Father. Heal whatever it is that's wrong with him. Those of you here, I welcome today. Those of you online, I welcome today. You at home watching, lift up those who you have prayers for. And we will pray for them. Father God, those we know and don't know, those who are lifting up people right now in your name, be with them and guide them and help them. Be with us here in this church. Tomorrow, Father, we have a service for one of our dear members, Virginia Thomas. Help her family and help those of us who miss her already. Guide us and keep us on that path that we need to be on. Give us your strength when we need it, Father. You always do, but we still ask. We know that you're with us. We know that you are comforting us. Now we're going to sing, or sing, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Music? Oh, yes, the kids. I almost, almost forgot the kids. Duh. That didn't hurt, so don't worry about it. We got a few back there, right? Hey, kiddos, what's up? Y'all, can you, can you read that? Backwards. No? Okay. Well, let's read it together frontwards, and I hope you all join. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart to stay. Kiddos, I, I have this phrase in my mind that I hear occasionally. It's something about, you're out of here. So if you want to depart, go on up and, and uh, ah, your victim is waiting there for you. Y'all have fun? I know you'll learn something. This is my bad on that one. It's a new gig we're doing now, so I don't always get it right.
Today's scripture comes from Mark 10, verses 35 to 45. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they had been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave at all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Chris. Something I forgot. Y'all probably, probably figured it already. But it fits in with the scriptures here. We need to praise the blessing, the offering plate. We need to be thankful for all that we can give to the church, to the community, to help others in our church, in our community. We do a lot of stuff here in this church. Don't break any arms trying to pat yourself on the back because we're not done. We've got a lot of stuff yet to do. And with God's help, our offering plate will help others. With God's help, he will fortify us to go forward and help others. So, with that being said, glory be to God. Chris, it was a lot there. When I thought about it, I'm like, well, he's not going to like whoever's the person. He's not going to like all this. But what is all this? Can any of us think of a time in our lives where we got jealous of somebody else because we didn't get picked? You don't have to raise your hand. You can nod your head if you want, unless it's going to rattle, then be quiet. But we do. We have that, right? Last night, I couldn't sleep. I woke up, and, and the sermon hasn't changed a whole lot from what's written here, but it has changed. And I think for the better. You'll be able to tell me that. So what is Christ telling them here? He's telling them that they're going to drink from that cup that he's going to drink from. He's telling them that they're going to suffer like he suffered to serve him. They didn't shy away, though. They stayed on point with him. They still went forward with him. And if you read your scriptures, which I highly recommend, by the way, they suffered like he did. God's not asking us to suffer. He's asking us to believe. He's asking us to do. Not sit on our hands. Not say, yes, I go to church on Sunday, and then what? When you pull out of the parking lot, everything's done for the rest of the week? That's not what we need. That's not what God asks of us. He asked all of us to be those hands and feet, to get into a committee in the church, in the community, to be positive. If you see someone who is ailing, help them. Give them a hand. Guide them. We never know, and it's scriptures, and I've heard it elsewhere, when we might entertain an angel. Because God does send angels to us, and sometimes we don't know. I remember a few years back when I was doing plastering, I saw this old gentleman on, uh, in Merrillville on 30, big, long, gray beard, lots of hair. I don't have that. The beard's gray. With a sign, help me. 
I was in the far left lane, and I'm pulling a trailer behind the truck full of scaffolding, so I could not swing over to see what he needed. I actually felt bad that I didn't do that. But I didn't want to tear things up because then my boss wouldn't have felt bad when he got rid of me. So I thought of myself more than I thought about that person who I didn't know. The freaky part, I don't know, three months later, I saw that same individual over here off of 20 with a sign, help me. You know what I did that time, right? I drove by. I didn't do what I should have done. I don't know that the guy was an angel, and it doesn't matter. He was a fellow human being who needed something. It may have just been a kind word. God has plenty of kind words for us in our scriptures. Christ tells these disciples, you will suffer as I. But there's, it's not up to him. It's not up to him to place two higher than the others. It's not like they're on the job punching the clock every day and your seniority grants you more than someone else. It's not like that. I don't think we would like it to be like that, would we? I mean, there's a, something about not being able to grab things that kind of makes us more curious about it, right? I say, if you want to get curious about it, grab one of these and use it. It's an awesome book. It's got a lot of pages, a lot of words. At Oakwood Manor a few weeks back for the Bible study that I am blessed to be able to take part in with them, and pastor comes most of the time with me, I explained something to them about this book. And in your version, doesn't matter. I explained to them. We were talking. We were reading scriptures. We were reading uh, Acts, the end of Acts, getting ready to go into Corinthians. And I told them, when you take a trip, what do you do? Do you, I mean, in the old days, for me, I would just get my atlas out or I'd call AAA and say, hey, can you send me one of those flip things so I can follow my whole trip, whether, where it was, to Mammoth Cave, to, to Gettysburg, to relatives in Colorado, it doesn't matter. I had a map. I had an atlas. I had something that I could readily open up and find out where was I and approximately how long is it going to take me to get where I want to go. Well, here you go. This is an atlas. It's got all kinds of information in it. It not only tells you where you want to go, but it shows you how to get there. It's a tough pill sometimes to take. Yet, when we do, we're so much blessed for it. See, God loves us so much that he gave his son for us. The scriptures, the, the Psalter that was read, I don't know how much you get into your reading of the Bible, but if you read that scripture, it tells about, uh, yet set a bound which they should not pass so that they might not gain again cover the earth. Talking about what? Talking about the waters, right? <coughs> this... <coughs> Worship is about the flood that Christ, that God brought to the earth. Now, and I got notes. Now, I'm not going to show them to you because they're in here. And, but I got notes about this when I was searching through, studying what I wanted to share with you all. I said, can anyone think of something that Christ and God did so we would know? And remember this. There's a simple answer. It's called a rainbow. In the scriptures, God says he will not wipe out the earth by flood again. And his point was, so you know and trust that I won't. After it rains, there'll be a rainbow. I know before I can hear it up here in the scripture, 
I told you about a double rainbow that I saw in Colorado after a rainstorm. I was doubly blessed. I had my nephew with me. who was, We were playing tag at the time. You're not supposed to do that in a car, I understand. But he was only 10. What we do matters. It really does. The simple act of saying good morning to someone matters. How you doing? How was your day? And sometimes we might ask that question not really wanting to know the answer, or we're hoping that it's a cliff note version, correct? We get antsy. Well, why don't you come to church with me this Sunday? Well, I really would like to, but, you know, I got something going on at noon. Awesome. We're done before that. I'll pick you up. That's all it takes. You get people here in these pews. You put them in here to listen to the word. Your job's done. God's job starts. He puts that word in their hearts. He puts that word in their being. And next thing you know, you got people that show up again every Sunday. It's like a habit. Only it's awesome. That's what God does for us. He swells us up inside. Not so much where our heads is going to explode or anything like that. But he leads us. By example, his son, Jesus. Other examples? Disciples throughout the Bible. There's characters, if you will, in this book that would floor you with what they've done. There's a guy who stopped the rain. It didn't rain for a very, very, very long time, and people were getting upset. Finally, he said, okay, let the rain come. I'm not going to tell you his name because I want you to look it up. He did have an assistant that went to the mountain top over and no clouds yet. Came back, went back again. No clouds yet. Came back, went back again. Small cloud way out there in the horizon. All right, come on back. And what did it do? It poured. It rained. Everything was happy again. Everything was green again. They had to mow again. So that's okay. That's what belief is. Trusting, trusting that whatever you do, God's there with you. He's not going to let you falter. He'll give you that out if you need it. Hopefully you don't want it. Prayerfully, you don't want it. We serve an awesome God. I know you know that. Last night's scripture, today's scripture, last night got changed somewhat. But that's okay. Because after I got done wrestling, I got up and wrote a few extra things down. Here's one of them I want to share with you. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. Why, you ask? Because that was his mission. His, his father, our father in heaven, said, things have got a little crazy down there, so I'm going to send you. Oh, and guess what? You're starting as an infant, and then you're going to go forward. Awesome stories. They're in this book. The truth is in this book. I can't remember the comedian's name, but he used to have this skit that's like, the truth will set you free. Well, he was right. It will. It will set you free. So, the sermon title, because I didn't want to give it away at the first, 
It was probably behind me, though. Yeah, it is. I know it. I see it over there, too. Why not me? Why not you? Why not you? Why not any of us? The whole thing is that Christ is there for each and every one of us every single moment of the day. I know I'm beating that horse a little. But as my old grandmother from Tennessee would say, boy, you just don't get it. Well, guess what, Grandma? I got it. And I love it. And I want you to have it. I want you all to have it. So my sermon title has changed. It's not why not me. It's why not us. Why don't we collectively accept God into our lives, do what Jesus, his son, has showed us to do, what this roadmap has showed us to do, be there for each other. And others. We pray for people we don't know. Why? Because it's the right thing. People that we don't know that are online are praying for us. Why? Because we're awesome. No, because they know what we are. We are believers. We are here to be those hands and feet that Christ asks us to be. And I am blessed to be able to be up here today and share it with you. I don't know. I was ornery. No, I'm not so much. Don't ask my wife, though. I was broken, and I got fixed. I got two bad knees and a bunch of other things wrong. But I got Jesus in my heart. So I'm good. I'm more than good. I'm blessed. I'm asking you to accept that yourselves. If you have, God bless you. If you haven't, talk to me. We'll worry about it. We'll get it done. I thank God every day for coming in my life. It was a tragic moment in my life. But he hasn't failed me one bit. I've failed him. I know I've failed him a few times. But he still accepts me. He still lets me stand up here and share with you all, which is a blessing in itself for me. I really have nothing else to say other than when we go forth. As that one guy says, get her done. He's a comedian. Not real funny most of the time, but that one I like. So, when we leave, which is real soon, according to this thing here. Trust in God. Put your faith in him. Because he's got faith in you. Father God, be with us all. Guide us. Get us through those minor skirmishes and those major problems. Help us to survive this life that we are living and to be those feet and those hands that you want us to be. So now may God who calls from every singing bird and flowering bush, but more poignantly from a cross and empty tomb, send you forth as sons and daughters of the resurrection to be joyous and radiant people transformed and transforming forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm.